I forgot how this platform works. <laughs> hey everybody, what's up? <laughs> I like to I like to mix a little comedy. Well, what's going on there? With a little fusion and uh, a little reality. So today's episode is called Adam Gets Help. And so to give you a background on it, Adam I met up in the, here in Roseville, California, uh, coming out of a uh, AMPM, I believe, over uh, Douglas and Kirby, I think, somewhere around there. And anyway, so there was something about Adam I noticed right off the bat. There's just something about him, uh, something actually cool about him, and then something like, um, how do I say this without being offensive and or abusive? Yeah. He's tore up from the floor up, okay? He knows it. We talked about it, and I'm gonna, he's going to be on here in a second. Uh, he's, he's got visible wounds like, like this. See, I got that. That is from hitting yourself with a hammer and you get a blood blister. Adam's wounds seem to be from what he called and described it as picking out. Um, he'll discuss his story uh, all the way through this. He's given me complete permission to do this. He said he wants to help me help him. And I said I want to help him help himself as well as myself too. Uh, anybody who's followed me on Facebook, Jake Reichman, knows that my real name is Kevin Brosnan, like the actor Pierce Brosnan. Hello there. And I created Reichman, R-Y-K-E-M-A-N, in order to go I right up to the very beginning and top of every search because that's the only way it's spelled. Now, somebody's got some brilliance there, don't they? So anyway, no further ado, some background, some backstory here. So I meet Adam, and uh, we click instantly, and another homeless guy, uh, who I met a long ways back, and I actually gave him my whole bag of bottles and cans and stuff because at that moment I didn't see a necessary need to to go dumpster diving, which I ended up doing, by the way, and uh, got some money from that. And then I realized that playing my guitar on the side of the road was fixing me up more money than the cans were. Anyway, that gentleman said to me, hey, can you take care of my buddy Adam? He's got nowhere to stay tonight, and he needs someone to look after him. And uh, he handed him off to me, and Adam was passing out, nodding off, as they say, at that moment. Okay. So we've been hanging out ever since, and uh, he started telling me everything about his past and a lot of his future plans, possibly. The one thing that all of a sudden occurred was uh, his desire to want to get clean and him wanting to get treatment. And I thought, well, I've heard that from a lot of fucking horses, man. You can get a, you know, a horse, get it, no pun intended. Uh, get that horse uh, to water, but you can't make him drink. However, Adam said, nope. I'm thirsty, I don't like my life, I cannot stand my life. And then he showed me pictures of what he looked like before this episode. The guy's not only beautiful, he's buffed, he's fucking 26, he's young, he's fucking, he's like a horse, bro, trust me. He's strong, and he's going to get better. And so what I'm looking to do is take this, wherever it goes, wherever it lands, and whoever watches it knows that there's somebody out there that's watching out and protecting, you know, even the unlikely people. Uh... And that just happens to be me right now. And I know there are other people across this world who do the very same thing I do every day. I'm nothing special. I'm really not. I just happen to be somebody with a talent and uh, that can reach across, you know, uh, many obstacles. And dealing with the homeless and drug addiction is a, is a tough job, boy. People say, hey, you start hanging around that barbershop, you're going to get a haircut. And I'm thinking like, okay, first of all, I've been in this barbershop now for a hot minute. And I ain't got no haircut from it, okay? That's why, you know what I know why? Because I don't do it anymore. How I do, how I learned that was from a 12 step program that said, hey, my sponsor, Dave Scotland, said, yo, this is designed to get you on sick. Thank you, Dave. That doesn't mean that I don't have times where I'm like, oh shit, I'd like to do something, you know? And then I, I look around at my constant AA platform right in front of me in NA. This has like been the COVID virus has been like a constant meeting all day long with people and do what I do best and especially back home the people that know me like Jeannie Purdue and stuff and everybody at the old uh, magic show would say this is exactly what Kevin's cut out for. I mean he has no shame. He has no fear and he goes right into the den of, of uh, lion's den so to say. The dragon. And man I never dealt with so many heroin addicts in my life. Uh, I mean continually. <laughs> so I just want to make people understand that what you're about to see is a real story, a real person, and it's, it's graphic. And Adam's uh, high as a kite right now, and uh, I'm going to let you see what um, it looks like. Let's see if I can make this thing flip around. Can I make this thing flip around? Come on, flip, motherfucker. <laughs> Excuse my language. 
Okay, we can't make it flip. I'll tell you what, though, we're gonna do this one here. This is Adam. I got him some ambrosia, and uh, that's uh, that's visible signs of what's either bruising from a bicycle accident. I think that's a bicycle accident. He said. They're just picking scars, and scars are just general nature. He uh, literally likes to slam it right in his neck right there. Uh, he showed me this morning, and uh, he is, I, I like to say, I don't know where he's at right now, but um, he's here, I know that much. I th probably can hear us. Adam, can you hear us? Oh, he's drilling. There goes the drill. There he gets it. All right, he's up. What's up, brother? How are you feeling? <clears throat> I haven't felt anything in a long time. I you, you mentioned that. So tell us about yourself, Adam. Because now we're we're live. We're not. We're we're filming for our first episode of Adam Gets Help. So you go ahead and say what you want to say. Well, there's not much to say. I haven't showered. In, I don't know a week. I get. Um, I'm starting to feel like a real bottom feeder, uh, especially when, you know, when your drug of choice happens to be heroin, okay, uh, even, that that's the worst of the worst, you know, parents fear that their kids are going to become heroin addicts, they're going to become dependent, <coughs> excuse me, on this drug that makes its way into their, and it makes its way into their, oh, into, your, in, into your family's home, their hearts, at the dinner table, it sits and eats and gets bigger and bigger like a big fat snake laughing in their face, and there's nothing that they can do about it, nothing that, seems like there's nothing that I can do about it, or you can do about it, but what we need to remember is I'm not a six-year-old boy diagnosed with cancer. I have a choice. I wake up every morning and I hate myself. I can go for miles. Because all this, all this, that is what I look like on the inside. And it just matches the outside, you know. Yeah, I didn't. You, I didn't look like this. It just shit. A few months ago, I've been using heroin for 12 years. 12 years. I'm 26 years old. Okay. It's taken everything from me. Everything. Cars, money, clothes, girlfriends. Not wives, because I've only been in two relationships because I refuse to be in a relationship while on drugs. Because it becomes, uh, how come you love that more than you love me? Even though I hate that, and it has nothing to do with me loving at all. You know, it has to do with me needing. What do I need? And unfortunately, love is not what I needed. Love is not what I need. Because of my physical dependency, heroin is what I need. Heroin comes first. Nobody told me where to run. Nobody told me where to hide. Heroin showed me where to turn. And... I think that's the answer. I think that's the problem with the millennials, period. Is, you know, we have this epidemic, this huge epidemic of what? where, uh, of addiction, right? especially opiates, where people are just dropping like flies. Yes, we know that. Yeah. You know, and I've lived in every single tent city from Del Paso Heights to Lincoln. You know, I can walk under a bridge and I know everybody on a first name basis. Um, but, you know, those people, they're not friends. 
You know, I believe Satan was a homeless man <laughs> because he feeds off the homeless. They're, you know, and especially if you don't know what it's like to be hungry, tired, dirty, embarrassed, and have more of a life behind walls than out. You know, and at this point, at this point in time in my life, um, my reward system is not wired correctly. I go to jail and I feel good and I'm happy and I actually gain something, which would be my self-respect. Because on the inside, fear was my best teacher. So I learned not to get high in there. Not because I didn't want to, but because I had to. And if I could do it in there and become a 215 pound monster that did what I had to do to survive because I could have died every single day. I can do it out here. That's what I have to say for the first place. Hey, okay, yeah, you know what? Let's let's cut it right there because I have some specific questions I want to ask Adam as far as like, you know, his past and what he's willing to tell us about it because I think that's important to know his backstory. Um, because, you know, you don't just wake up one day and say, hey, I want to be a heroin addict and have everybody fucking love to hate me. Shit. Right? No shit. Okay, and then you don't get wake up and then sit the second day and say, "Wow, that was so much fun that everything I've heard about it just sounds so appealing, and I just want to keep doing it." Usually, and from what I understand, from we've already talked about it, he's got a fucking a sharp. You know, I want this to be a show that can be all over the place. So I need to use, I need not use f words. I guess he's probably going to use them. He's actually he doesn't swear a lot and he says some prolific stuff that's unbelievable so I know he's inside there he has a core belief that God exists and anybody that watches me or hears my music I say the G word like it's going in style I hope it comes you know your way anyway so I'm gonna let this go right now I wanna let this feed out I want people to see that this is the first episode of Adam Gets Help your host Jake Reichman otherwise known as Kevin Brosnan and along the way we're gonna see how Adam and I make some money while I sing and play on guitar on the corner and people pitch us some money, okay? Uh, obviously, I got some kind of talent, I hope. But Yeah, he does his hustle. <laughs> so, he's got, he's got a, yeah, he did. He's got a real wicked sense of humor, okay? And I find that refreshing despite the world and everything around him being a direct result of his choices. He said it a second ago, right? His new choices, he wants to get help. He's got a deal going on on July 1st where if he doesn't get into a treatment center, then he's going to be going into prison. Now, if you're saying, well, of course he's got to get help, so he wants to do that, well, then that means that two things are occurring. The very idea that he says that it's a corrupt situation, I know firsthand that uh, the institutional system has its own quirks. They work their own system. They are their own world in themselves. I do not judge that. I do not have any recommendations for it because that's them. And you know what? God bless the shot callers because, man, without them, there would be mayhem in prison, okay? That's one. He did say, though, that he uh, felt better in there, but he also said, I don't want to go back. Boom, all right? So at this point, it's also my best uh, guess to say that our system is working. The outside system here, even as much as we see bad cops or good cops making bad decisions or bad cops making really worse decisions, it all stems from what I talk about in the very beginning, and that is an overwhelming blindness to our own insensitive reaction to things we just don't like. A lot of lip service goes on. A lot of lip service, you know. Uh, well, like I said, I'm cut out for this. I seem to get along with everybody. They get along with me and respect me. I haven't had anybody steal from me. That man, Mark, uh, uh, God damn it, what was his last name? Mark Cower. He had Huntington's disease, and I and I, I understand that. It wasn't. I took it personally because it hurt at the time. I needed some money, and and then boom, <laughs> God said, "Hey man, I got your back," and I had some money the next day. I haven't had to have much money to actually survive out here. 
I, uh, I'm even cleaning my own anger with my, with my family. Why? Because you can't pick your family, folks. You just can't. I mean, you can't, even if you're in foster care, you can't even do that, right? Bottom line is, but you can choose your friends better. And uh, so Adam and I are on a journey together. We've got a few days to get this done because I want to satisfy the court system. I don't know anything about it. I haven't looked into that yet. And because of Corona, it may even be pushed back. Who knows, right? Um, I think that they really want to see this kid get his, his, his stuff together, right? So that he can become an effective member of society. Wouldn't you want to be? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, and so, and in my, I dream big. I, I, I say go big or go home. You know I like big, right? Boom. So, bottom line is, <laughs> what I mean by that is that I look at this kid and say, you know what, if he can do this, and, and you ought to see this picture. We're going to get to that part of the episode, some other episode, where you see Adam, what he looks like at 190 pounds. He's about a buck 10 right now, a buck 20. And so, you'll see the muscle on him, the Sheila Tone on him, and I still think he looks great as he is because, man, you know what? He has a building block body that can go from zero to just badass in, in probably a, a couple months. What I'm getting at and what I mean by this all is that he wants to help. I'm willing to give it to him. Let's watch this roll out. Let's see where this leads to. Let's see if we can get the horse, no pun intended, to the water. And uh, Let's get this thing involved. Yeah, exactly, because uh, I want it to be something to where it can transcend into saying, hey, Catastrophic catalyst. <laughs> catastrophic catalyst. Something good. That's what I want. I want exactly. I want people to know what's out there. Yeah. Well, and actually, not not only so much a how-to video as much as it is a what happened today video and what's going to happen tomorrow in his life because he might be uh, he might be running one of my treatment centers one day. Boom. Thank you very much for listening. Stay tuned for the next episode. Episode. It will be titled Number Two. Adam gets help number two, okay? Thank you. I'm posting this right now. Boom, shakalaka, laka, boom, boom, boom. One, two, three, follow me.